Joining the SAGE Network provides your clinic with a new source to fund cancer screening services for your underinsured and uninsured patients. Let's take a quick look at your clinic's contract with the SAGE program and the procedures for billing after delivering services to a SAGE patient. All SAGE partners, including clinics and mammography sites, labs, surgical groups, and hospitals, sign the SAGE provider agreement. It's a legal contract that defines the relationship between SAGE and medical providers who care for SAGE patients. Once signed, it's in effect until either party requests to end the agreement. The provider agreement spells out the terms every medical provider that works with SAGE must follow. The provider must accept SAGE reimbursement as payment in full. The provider must bill a patient's insurer first. SAGE is the payer of last resort for most patients. For American Indians covered by IHS insurance, SAGE is billed prior to IHS. Services delivered through the SAGE program must be free to the patient. The provider cannot bill her for an unpaid SAGE service or insurance copay. The SAGE program only accepts CPT codes listed on the SAGE reimbursement rates sheet. Its payment levels are tied to Medicare rates and thus change yearly. They're always available on the SAGE website. Remember which services SAGE covers. Office visits with pelvic or breast exams, mammograms, pap smears with or without HPV co-testing, follow-up visits, breast diagnostic services and pathology, colposcopy, and limited endometrial biopsies, and while SAGE can cover pre-op visits and associated lab charges, it can't cover CT scans and can only cover MRIs following very specific guidelines for high-risk women. SAGE will pay for a PAP or HPV test if you're providing cervical services to a new clinic patient, regardless of when the patient reports that she had her last test. If you question whether or not something is covered by SAGE, it's best just to call the program to avoid a potential denied claim. SAGE will only accept electronic claims. Clearinghouse information is available on the SAGE website. Providers needing to use paper claims should contact SAGE to work out a plan. SAGE requires specific information in order to accept claims. The NPI, tax ID, name and address of your organization, the patient's name, date of service, and encounter number, the CPT code that you're billing for, and the charge for the services provided. When patients have insurance, the SAGE system requires that providers always bill insurers first, even if they know the claim will be denied. Once the denial is in hand, providers can bill SAGE. Providers must submit the denial and an explanation of benefits with the claim and report any amount paid by insurance. Patients can't be billed for SAGE covered services. Once SAGE receives a claim, the validation process begins. Conducted daily, validation is the process by which the SAGE system ensures it can pay for a claim. For instance, if a provider charges for a mammogram, the system will check if the enrollment and imaging forms were received before approving payment. This is why it's so important to complete and submit SAGE forms up front. Doing so helps the entire SAGE system run more smoothly. The SAGE remittance advice contains information on claim status. It reports what's happening with each submitted claim, whether it has been paid, has been denied, or is still in process. If a claim is denied, you can resubmit information to SAGE. That's it, the entire story of how the SAGE billing process works. The SAGE billing staff are available to help with any questions, so please reach out at any time. Thank you for helping to keep Minnesota women healthy.